Hello, my name is Gavin Scott, and I'm talking this afternoon with Laurie Andhoes Benson about her book, To Have and Not to Hold, about her daughter Kate, how she gave her up for adoption when she was a baby, and how she found her again. So Laurie, I'd like to start off by asking you about who you were and where you were in, in your life when you found that you were pregnant. Well, I actually was at a very exciting time in my life because I had uh, pretty recently gotten like a dream job. I, I was, uh, had just gotten uh, to be the associate producer for uh, Phil Donahue's segments on the Today Show. And it was just a real, a real break for me. And I'd been there, oh, six or nine months and um, had started dating this gentleman and everything seemed to be going great and um, I was a good Catholic girl who never expected to have sex and so I ended up pregnant. And so in a nutshell, why did you decide to give the baby up for adoption? Well at the time um, I just was in a very difficult place and uh, it was an agonizing decision. It took me nine months to get there. And um, I just felt that there was no assurance that I would have any kind of a relationship with the father. My family wasn't there. I was alone in a big city. I had this job, which while it was a great job, it was also an all-consuming, 24-7 kind of job. And I just felt like this little baby would come and be in daycare from the very beginning a night and day and it just wasn't a, what I wanted for my child so in the end I decided to give her to an adopted family. How did you actually go about it? Well I was a producer so I researched like crazy looked all over the country trying to figure out what I when I when I made, was making that decision I didn't even know anything really about adoption um, and uh, I just thought I'm gonna check out my options. It ended up there was a wonderful agency in the Chicago area that was nationally recognized called The Cradle. Uh, went there, I started going um, every few weeks, I'd go and meet with the social worker, get to know each other better, and um, they never pushed me, they never made me feel like you know I had to do things their way. They were, they were wonderful, and um, so I decided to go with them, and they presented me with five families. And if I hadn't liked any of them, they would have presented me with five more. And, but in that first group, there was just something about this one family's profile that really, really got to me. Nevertheless, I imagine that actually handing your baby daughter over must have been an agonizing experience. Uh, indescribable, really. It, uh, it was so painful, and while I was sure I was doing the right thing, uh, on the third day, at, the, at that time you stayed in the hospital for three days, and the night before I was leaving, Phil Donahue and his wife Marlo Thomas called and just tried one more time to let me know how supportive they were and they wanted to be there if there was anything we could do to, so that I could keep the baby. Well, that kind of shook my resolve. And so for a week afterwards, it was horrendous. Uh, all the questions came back and I ended up uh, finally going back with my original decision. I just, I knew it wasn't a job where I could have a baby on my hip, you know, it just wasn't going to be feasible to do that. How did you feel afterwards? So, it was very difficult for the next six years, uh, but especially for the next three, because I thought we had an agreement where we could exchange uh, information, you know, not all the time, maybe once a year, once every two years, a picture now and then. And at six months, I got a letter um, saying, it's been six months, the adoption is final, there will be no more contact. And that was when the door closed. That was when suddenly all the emotions came out and um, that was devastating. And for the next few years, I kind of worked on trying to open the policy at the cradle because at that time, some people were starting to have open adoptions. It was just starting. So what happened to you in your life after this, this drama was over? Uh, after three years, the adoptive family actually went back and uh, wanted to adopt again. And so uh, it, it was great. They called me and said, the records are open. If you want to get a letter to them, now's the time. 
And what led you to decide to get in touch with Kate again? How did that come about? Well, she was 16 years old when we actually had the reunion. Uh, the years prior to that, there were um, letters, of course, between her mother and I exchanged. And not that often, maybe, you know, once every year or so. Pictures, I finally got pictures. And then Kate got curious. And her, her parents were so supportive. And so first she wrote me a letter at 13. I wrote her back. Then there was nothing for a little while. Then one more letter. And then we started to email a little bit, and finally we decided we would uh, get together, and she and her mother came to where we were living in Naples, and we had a weekend reunion, which was amazing. So what happened when you finally met? That must have been an incredibly intense emotional experience. Indescribable in the emotional area. Um, but then uh, it was also almost mystical because there was this meant to be quality about the whole weekend. It was um, uh, this natural feeling. There was no real awkwardness. Everybody seemed to get along and feel, you know, like they knew each other. It was really um, magical. I was going to say that's the interesting thing that not only did you find that there was a bond with your daughter but that you also found a real relationship with her adoptive mother and she with you, which is the other challenge. I yes, think. and uh, it was from the beginning. I almost want to say it started when we were just writing to each other, but it was almost as though the, um, the two of us uh, were meant to be friends or family and that Katie was the one who brought us together. I mean, it, it was a real, it's a real connection. It still is to this day. Uh, there's a mutual love society going on between us, and uh, and it happened that very same night. In fact, a funny story was that um, Steve and Katie, after the re you know big moment had happened and settled down a little, were standing talking in the kitchen, and Anne and I were on the couch with our glass of wine and laughing and touching each other's legs and carrying on. And Katie looked at Steve and said, "And I thought this was about me." <laughs> And it was wonderful. What about the two husbands? How did they feel about it? Well, you know, it almost seemed like everybody did did the right thing. And that's why I don't want to be a Pollyanna and think that everybody's going to have this kind of uh, uh, finish to their story. But um, her adoptive father, Temple, was a magnificent man filled with good humor and love and just supported what his daughter wanted to do. And my husband, uh, you know him, he's, he's just the greatest guy in the world. And he really took on the role as, you know, a, a father figure for Katie, too. So they both made it, it work very seamlessly. What was it that motivated you to write the book? I can see why this is a very happy and wonderful story for you, but clearly you felt that it would also say something to other people who hadn't had exactly the same experience. Absolutely. Um, a lot of times I hear from adoptive parents, and there is definitely a fear of letting this other person come into their world, and I understand that. Um, but I guess I wanted to say give it a chance you know if it's something your child wants give it a chance try and and conquer that fear because it could really enhance everybody's life in our case uh, Katie's mother it was so welcoming and so filled with love and just felt like the more love the better and she she was not um, uh, threatened at all by by she did, she was secure very confident in her place in Katie's life and so it wasn't that another mother was coming in it was another person to love her daughter but she's the mother I gather that this book is the first of a trilogy what, what's in the rest of the series well um, this is just kind of developed uh, with my publisher and the next book is going to be a resource for adoptees, adoptive parents, and birth parents. It's going to be um, stories from people who have walked this path, and they're going to give their lessons learned, their words of wisdom, what they've learned from their experience, maybe what they wish they'd done differently, or maybe what they wish their parents had done differently, depending on the role. 
And so I'm hoping it will be a real resource for those in the, in the adoptive world. And the third book? The third is still in development. Uh, it started out it was going to be a children's book, but I've started to have some other ideas that I think might be more um, exciting and something different for, for a different uh, look at things. So uh, still working on that. And what's the, the message overall you hope people will take from what you've written? Well, I do think that families are not cookie cutter families. They come in all uh, in all ways, and sometimes it, it just happens, and it's unexpected. And um, I think people should be open to that and uh, and encourage. I would like to encourage um, also uh, people who would consider being a birth parent or find themselves in that position. Um, I think a lot of people, in fact, I read letters in magazines from people who said I could never give my baby up and so I had an abortion. And I would like to encourage people to consider this um, because it's painful, it's, it's difficult, but sometimes it really does work out where it, it all makes sense now. It all seemed to have happened for a reason. And I, I feel like I've benefited as has Katie's family. So I do think that it, it, it's worth giving a chance to it. Laura Benson, thank you very much.